A kind day to you all, I'm Kinsmark, and this is Let's Play Silver Creek Falls Chapter 1, the first in what is planned as a series of small indie RPG games, so let's get started. Captain Pendleton's office, Norfolk Police Station, Norfolk, Virginia. What a jazzy soundtrack already. Kinda into this. Captain Pendleton, Detective Sarah Fitzgerald, reporting for duty. Ah, you're the transfer from Boston, right? Pleasure to meet you, Detective. This will be your new partner, Inspector Philip Moore. Pleasure to meet you, Detective. Hey, how you doing? Inspector Moore also comes to us as a transfer, all the way from England. You were with Scotland Yard, am I correct? And I confess, I already knew. Yes, sir. Excellent. I think both of you will make an excellent team. With extensive experience in homicide and missing persons between you, I think this new case will be right up your alley. Cool, what's happening? Already kind of excited about homicide, all right? We've had a very strange request coming from a small town called Silver Creek Falls. They need some detectives to help solve a case that's baffling the local sheriff. Silver Creek Falls? I've never heard of it. Where is it? Well, not really too surprising. It's a small town in Hawthorne County, North Carolina. North Carolina? Shouldn't they send someone from Durham or Charlotte? Norfolk is actually closer, would you believe? Also, how could I deny them a Massachusetts State Trooper and an inspector from Scotland Yard? Of course. So, what are the details of the case? I think it's best you let the local sheriff explain it to you. Now, you'll be heading over tonight and staying a few nights to solve this case. All this courtesy of Hawthorne County. Must be quite a sticky case, eh? It is. The local sheriff is quite a famed lawman, so when he put in a request to a high commissioner, the commissioner insists that I give them someone good. We won't let you down, Captain. You two can go home and pack your bags and drive over to Silver Creek Falls tonight. The local deputy will receive you at the local hotel and see y'all get settled in. Meet him at the Silver Creek Falls Hotel. We're on it, Captain. Sarah? Yes? Do you mind driving us there? I still haven't gotten used to driving on the other side of the road. Sure, we'll take my car. Alright. Four hours later, Silver Creek Falls, Hawthorne County, North Carolina. Controls, arrow keys are movement. Alright, that'll have to get some getting used to. Space and enter are select and use, and escape is menu and inventory. Alright, simple enough. Pay attention to all the clues and information you find in every place you visit. Look at your inventory if you need to review things. This game is a mystery adventure. Details from investigations and the story are essential, so always pay attention. Alright. I will do as well as I can, because also, just so everyone knows, I'm looking at a very small window, so if there are some things that I can't see very well, that is why. Alright, so all the doors are locked. Which car did we come in? This one? Or the cruiser? Alright. I like these animations, they're kind of jaunty. And are, are we sure that man is a Mr. Moore? Because he looks a little like a Mr. Kennedy, if you know what I mean. Alright, so... As I've heard, this is a relatively short experience. And I know I should head inside, I'm just checking the perimeter in case there's anything I might miss. So I'll attempt to contain this to a single episode. Okay, so that's a pawn. Objective, find Deputy Hill in the hotel lobby. All right, then. I like the soundtrack. You look like a deputy. Deputy Hill? Yep, you two must be the extra muscle we requested from Norfolk. Pleasure to meet you. Yes, we are. I'm Detective Sarah Fitzgerald, and this is Inspector Philip Moore. It's a pleasure, mate. Well, boy, am I glad you two are here. Some really strange things have been happening here. The captain hasn't told us anything, either. What's going on? You folk have had a long drive over. I'm sure you're tired and want to get some good sleep. I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Get some good sleep tonight whilst you can. I promise you, after you see the file, you won't be able to. I know I sure as hell can't. Okay, then. I just came to welcome you to Silver Creek Falls and make sure you were fine. Just mosey on over to the concierge over there and she'll give you your keys to your rooms. Shall I meet you here at the lobby tomorrow morning? Let's say 8 a.m.? Perfect. See you then, deputy. Alright then. Seriously, I like this soundtrack. 
Anything else? I'm kind of a completionist, so, uh... I check pretty much everything. Oh man, I think the socks are having a game tonight. Miss, do you have a remote for this TV? Sorry, we normally leave it on the news channel for our guests. Besides that, TV doesn't have cable. That sucks! You have cable in your room, man. Awesome! Let's go, Red Sox! Alright then. Hi, Deputy Hill told me he's checked us in already. Yes, here are your room keys. It's the room most to the left. Is it left for them, or, or left on the screen? Thanks. Uh, I think I'll have a drink before I sleep. How about you? I'm tired from the drive. I think I'll head up. Sorry I made you drive all the way. I still haven't learned how to drive on the other side of the road yet. I know, we covered this. Alright. Anything else I should check around here? Well, guess I should head up to the room then. Can I actually watch the game? Okay, let's do this. Red Sox time! Aw, oh, nuts, it's over! At least the Red Sox won. Might as well go to bed now. Alright, anything on the nightstand? I'm only here for a couple of nights. No need to unpack. Yeah, I'm the same way. Do you want to sleep for today? Yes. Day two. Alright, anything on the morning TV? I think the Bruins are playing later, or is it the Patriots? Either way, I know Boston's got it. Alright. Should I have checked some of these other rooms? Is there something suspicious afoot? I'll allow them their privacy. Come around again when I have a search warrant. Right. Good morning, madam. I hope you slept well. Like a baby, thank you. So when's this going to take a hard turn for the creepy? Because I know it's coming. Sarah makes herself coffee. Right. A little pick-me-up for the morning. Anything else on TV here? I think the Bruins are playing. Yeah, yeah. So... There we are. Deputy Phillip, good morning. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Detective. I wanted to talk to you guys before we head out and look at the three crime scenes. Deputy, we have seen crime scenes before. We know what we're doing. Not like this, I promise you. I may be a small town deputy, but I can promise you now that you'll never see anything like this. Okay, bring it on. Before we start, where's the sheriff? I, uh, well, uh, I, I don't know exactly. What? After he put in the request for seasoned homicide and missing persons detectives, he went missing. Does Captain Pendleton know this? Nope. What the hell? Sarah, please calm down. Deputy, let me guess. It wasn't the sheriff who put in the request, right? No, sir. It was you, right? Yes, sir. You've got a lot of explaining to do, buddy. This kind of stunt can get you suspended, you know. Sarah, please. Getting angry won't get us anywhere. Young man, explain yourself. With the sheriff gone, what choice did I have? I've only been on the force for three months! I thought this job was gonna be easy! That's why I took the job in this dead-end town. Suddenly people are going missing left, right, and center. You'd seen the things I've seen, man. <laughs> and he breaks into tears. <laughs> Relax, kid. What's your name? Mike. It's okay, Mike. I know you weren't expecting to see things like this, but you're the sheriff now. You're in charge of this town. Now, why'd you use the sheriff's name to request reinforcements? Because if I'd used mine, no one would have listened. Sheriff Lee Davis was a respected lawman. He was even invited to the High Commissioner's birthday. And now he's missing. Look, I, I need your help to solve this case. I don't know what I'm doing. I came last in my class at the police academy. Only Sheriff Davis was kind enough to take me. Have you been to his house since he disappeared? No. Oh my god! Amateur! I'm kind of with her on this. Sarah! How long has he been gone? two days. That's it, kid. I think it's time for an ass-kicking. Oh, now. Slow down. Sarah! Control yourself. God, I feel like I'm in the departed. Well, Mary Poppins, here in America, we- Here in America, 
We don't solve all of our problems with a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. Jeez. This is well written, at least. Can, can I please only talk to the British guy? Sarah, please take a walk. You can get coffee or something by the concierge. Go get some coffee, Sarah, with sugar to help sweeten your mood, perhaps. Alright then. A little tension. Let's, uh, let's enjoy some of that coffee we made earlier. It's probably cool at this point. Make yourself some coffee. Hey, are, are, are you, um, someone I should yell at as well? Good morning, madam. Yeah, yeah, I slept well. Uh huh. Appreciate that. So, uh, are we, are we cool? I know I said some things. I might have threatened someone. Um, yeah, kind of awkward. You guys done? Yep, I'll fill you in later. Okay, deputy, show us the crime scenes. My car's parked outside, shall we? Sure, let's go. Okay, then, here's a map of our town in case you feel like walking around later. Use the button A to activate map and deactivate use button Z. Alright, that I'll have to keep in mind. Let's do the scenes in chronological order. The first is a house on Fisher Road, close to the end of Washington Avenue. Am I gonna have to remember all this? Alright, so first, Fisher Road. Alright. I think I'll just check the map setting. So, alright, that's a pretty simple map. So, Fisher Lane is there near the north end. Alright. So, yeah, I am, I think, actually controlling where we walk, so... Let's see. My cruiser's in the hotel parking lot on the other side of the hotel. Oh, okay, so we're not walking. Awesome! Well, that answers the question of whose cruiser this is. Um, can I can I get in the passenger door? There we are. I guess we just all shimmied in. All right. So let's see these creepy crime scenes. Yeah. All right. Well, someone made a mess. Uh. Oh, that's a hole in the floor. This looks like a slaughterhouse. I'll give it to you, deputy. This is one of the worst crime scenes I've ever seen. So what can you tell me about the people that lived here? This is the house for the sorority Phi Kappa Beta. It was quite a popular sorority in the local college. How is a sorority popular? I think I know. I'll rephrase. It was the sorority for the popular girls. All the girls that lived here were doing modeling work. Oh, wow. It's starting to look like we have motives. Have you checked for semen? All right, so we're getting straight to the point here. We haven't really done any forensics as we don't have that capability. There is no forced entry. It could be a possibility, but... Sheriff thought it unlikely. So, how many girls lived here? Four girls lived here, but five disappeared. We tried to confirm this with blood samples, but we don't really have the tech here for it. Alright. Besides, it's all mixed. A fifth one disappeared too? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah, she was also a member of the sorority, but didn't live in. Neighbors reported hearing loud singing and chanting on the night they disappeared. Freaked them out, so they called the sheriff and I, and... Asked them to quiet down. When we got there, we found everything the way you see it now. Sheriff and I took photos and some small samples, but everything's more or less the way we found it three days ago. Understood, Deputy. We'll take a look around and get some blood samples and such for evidence. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm still in... There we are. So... Creepy cult kind of activity? Sounds like... Sample added to inventory. Sample added to inventory, so I should check everything. Alright. This hole in the floor is enormous. I wonder if this was here before all this happened. Uh -huh. What a mess. It smells horrible. Well, it's probably several days old. And I mean, I went to college, so it probably smelled horrible already. Sample added to inventory. Alright. I'm into this. Sample added inventory. I hope I haven't got to, like, sort all these at some point. Bullet holes! Any bullets inside? Some fragments. What the hell happened to him? Shell casings added to inventory. Alright, um... Bullets and shell casings are two very different things. I assume that means we collected the fragments from inside, and there was spent casings on the floor. That's what I'm saying. Uh, let's see... Is that a Ouija board? Oh my goodness. 
What is it? It's a Ouija board. Stupid kid. Shouldn't mess with things they don't understand. Ouija board added to inventory. I, I didn't want to touch it. All right, fine. Deputy, you, you can, can you carry that? Because I, I want, uh-uh. I want exactly zilch of that. Um, can I check the couch? Sample added to inventory. All right, so I have to stand in some pretty particular places to collect some of these. Um, that corner, no. There we are, all right. So it's a little finicky control-wise. Let's see, have I checked that particular hole in the wall? Yeah. All right, these, let's see. I'm still acclimating to using the arrow keys as well. Sample added inventory. Philip, do you think these big ass holes may have something to do with this? Maybe, this house does look pretty old. If someone or something made a hole that big, I don't want to meet them. Yeah, I'm on the same page. Sample added inventory. What is this? Is that mud? Because it isn't a hole. Jeez. Someone wasn't interested in covering their tracks, that's for freaking sure. Oh, and I almost missed that. There's a little, like, letter in the middle of the floor. Read note. Hmm. A note of sorts. They laugh, they sing, they dance, but with who? There were six in this party, not five. What? So... Someone was here... Calling all of this together. Sample added to inventory. And if that was left here, that means someone was counting on a law enforcement investigation finding it. So, at this stage, we're acting at their direction, dancing to their tune, as it were. Spells, incantations, and divinations. Summoning spirits. You misspelled incantations. A book on witchcraft. What the hell were these kids trying? Spell book added to inventory. Alright. Creepy. How many samples? I can't tell how many of these are repeats and how many of these are individual samples. This place really reeks, but it's not just your typical corpse smell. Yeah, because there aren't any! I was just thinking that! Yes, this is a very strange smell. There's definitely some ammonia around. Not just ammonia, a burnt hair smell. This place is really creepy. Uh huh. So that... It's possibly some kind of leftover smell from whatever the hell ritual they were performing? Oh, some hair. I wonder if they had a pet or something. Animal hairs. Uh, <laughs> Alright. That's creeping me out. What is this? Sorority file added to inventory. I wonder if I can read those. I'll check in a second. Sample added to inventory, and that looks like wine bottles there all over. Shocker there, right? So, let's check. Escape is items. Uh, so, alright. I've already read that, which means 9mm casings from Sorority House, alright. I've <laughs> 25 samples. Alright, I can't read the sorority file or the spell book, so... I can't rely on any details there. I'll save since I've made a little headway. Um, what else is there for me to check? Huh. Maybe if I head outside, we'll check the next scene? Apparently. Alright. I think it's time I 
set aside the toothpick. I was keeping it for the image with the whole investigation aspect of this, because I kind of knew the sort of experience I was in for. Uh, where are we? Um, map? Can I chat with the deputy? Where, where are we? Where are we headed? All right. Uh, the crime scene is south, into the park. All right. I, all right. Hey, hey, hey. I'm, I'm heading that way. Aha. Here we are. And I'm trying to keep all these accents straight. Let's see. Is that plant significant? No. All right. This creek is gorgeous. I'm surprised I've never heard of it before. Oh, that's probably because they changed its name recently. It used to be called Nawadi Amaya. Sounds foreign. What language is that? Cherokee. These lands used to belong to a Cherokee tribe, but they sold it off years back. Sold? When? Oh, this was long ago. The town founder, Jebediah Schwartz, bought most of their land to create this town. How much did he pay? Let me guess. He swapped it all for a shiny few beads and a mirror, right? Not quite. He paid them 50 stallions and 130 rifles. He didn't buy all their land, either. Just the land between the west of the creek and the mountain. A bit better, I guess, but still, that's a pretty sweet deal he got for himself. They owned the rest till about 20 years ago, when it was then bought out by some venture capitalists. Famous North Carolina banking family, actually. What did they end up doing with it? Nothing at the end. They sent a crew of engineers over to look at the land, as they wanted to build some high-end apartments here. They never got around to building it, and just declared it a nature reserve about 10 years ago. Interesting story. Hmm. Something tells me there's a little more of a reason why they never started construction. The hell was that? Whoa! Uh, easy there, cowboy. What the hell was that for? Uh, sorry for shooting without warning you. Till I saw something stalking us in the woods, like a wolf or something. You weren't even sure what you were shooting. Confirm your target, man. I haven't been wolves in these parts for a while now. I wouldn't be so sure. Anyway, bring us to the next scene. No, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm checking that. The hell? Come on, you can't just shoot at something and not make a serious investigation of it. That kind of thing can get one in some serious shits. Especially from an Englishman! Because I'll attempt to keep any you know, comment, war, about police, all that, yada yada, from uh, kicking off. Still, as a trend, Euro law enforcement are much more conservative with when they pull the trigger than Americans. That's just plain fact. So the fact that he was the one with the, like, snap reflex, I'm like, Eh. What can you tell us about this case, Deputy? Uh, we got a call early in the morning after the incident at the sorority. Owners found tons of blood, broken branches, holes in the ground, and the soil all messed up. The sheriff and I took photos, but left his side alone. Thanks. Okay, so shall we get to work collecting evidence? Alright, so all of that was just the path leading here. So this is the actual crime scene. Alright. Hmm. This hair is very soft and light. Not human, I'm guessing. Looks like it might come from a wolf or something. Is this a werewolf story? Cause I'm creeped out. You haven't had wolves in these parts for a while. Bears? Nope. Do people camp here now that it's become a national park? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you have bears. I don't know, this one looks like it might be bears or maybe wolves. Uh-huh. Sample. More of these big holes. I wonder how deep they go. Sarah, do you smell that again? Yes, that mix between ammonia and burnt hair. It's awful. Sample out an inventory. This is exceedingly atmospheric. I am incredibly impressed with the way this is leading itself in. That's a lot of shell casings. Whoever fired these had the time to squeeze out a few, eh? Hey? Question is, was it the assailant or was it the victim? Shell casings added inventory. 
So, were these, like, concealed carry holders that were attacked and simply attempted to defend themselves, or are there hunters of whatever the hell it is I'm investigating, and they were actually fighting it? What are these big holes? And another letter. What is this? Another note. So I guess this rules out a bear or wolf attack. How do you know the note belongs to the assailant? Hmm. Same type of paper as the note of the sorority house. Let's read it. Um, he walked alone in the forest to become one with nature. He got his wish. Yeah, this is starting to sound an awful lot like a shapeshifter. Alright. I wasn't actually expecting any kind of supernatural twist to this. I can appreciate it, however. I like it. It's just kind of catching me off guard. Huh. Alright, so I think that's everything I can search here. Let's... we need to collect more blood evidence. Okay, so I'll check each of these patches. leave now? Alright. So thankfully it seems like it will tell me if I've missed something that I clearly need. Alright. So, on to the third. Oh jeez. <sighs> okay deputy, tell us what happened here. At about 11 o'clock, same day as we got the report in the park, we got a call from a nearby farmer that he saw a car crash. Where's the farm? Uh, a bit less than a mile south of here. A mile away? How did he see the crash? His house is on that hill over there. Sorry, kid, but that farmer's telling you some tales. Pitch black night, close to a mile over forest ground. I'm sure he heard the crash. But no way in hell did he see it. Was he specific on the details on the crash? No, he wasn't. Okay, then. So, what did you and the sheriff see here? We looked around to see if there was a body. <laughs> Sorry! Suddenly, he spent some time around the English... I knew I was going to slip at some point. We looked around to see if there was a body. We uh, found none. We decided to call a night. We were supposed to come back the next morning, but the uh, sheriff didn't report in that morning. So, you left the scene for two days. We put the cones and the barriers up that night, so I don't think it was tampered. That's a pretty big assumption there. Kid, the local wildlife are more likely to see those cones as a toilet than a barrier. This whole scene is contaminated. Sorry, I have to agree with her this time. It was pretty dumb leaving this alone this whole time. Anyway, let's look for some evidence. Uh-huh. Sample. That looks like a drag mark. With separate samples. So... The drag is... Possibly even a coyote or something, like, pulling chunks of meat around. So, there's little reliability to any evidence found here, except for this, I assume? Another note. Why well, am I not surprised? Go on, read it. The young rush as if they lack time, but if you rush too much, you risk losing all your time. Alright, so... Car crash, rushing... Is this some kind of... Sick kind of poetic justice? I don't know. Let's check the car. A bit of blood inside, but most of it seems to be outside the vehicle. So they crashed, and then they were attacked. So we can rule out the impact killing the driver. Well, no body, right? Any ID inside? A bunch of receipts in the floor. Well, let's get those just in case the car plates don't match with the missing person. Wow, you think this might be a stolen vehicle? They slammed pretty hard into that tree, and it was through a straight, not even on a turn. They might have been driving fast to get away from something. You guys really think three cases might not be related? Uh, while we do agree that three cases this gruesome in a span of 48 hours is highly unusual for a town like this one, we should still account for the possibility that all three are separate, and it was pure coincidence that they happened so close to each other. I like this man. Sheriff Davis seemed sure all three were related. Pity Sheriff Davis isn't here. Yeah. No 
blood stains on any of the passenger seats. Solo night driver, eh? Mm hmm. So single driver. Hit a tree, didn't die, was attacked. More shell casings. All three scenes had casings. It looks like whoever is responsible fired at all his victims. This is the south, and we're in the country. A lot of people carry guns around here. Good point, deputy. Shell casings added to inventory. Are they all of the same caliber? Um, that's from the sorority house. It says I have three of them. So, I'll just assume that they are indeed all of the same caliber, which implies all from the same weapon. Alright. I'll also save, come to think of it, because I've made a little more progress. So, what's in this? Huh, a loosely sealed bottle of Merlot. There isn't much left. There was wine at the sorority house. They never made any mention of it. I saw it, though. Hmm. I feel like there's something just off screen. Can I even... It's strange that an isometric perspective in an RPG... Wow, this stretches on a ways can give one the impression that there are eyes watching one, and yet I have that feeling. Somehow. And that's actually a pretty impressive feat, considering the nature of the way this is put together. Uh, alright, well, I can't tell what else I might have to check, so... Let's see the inventory. Is there anything here that might give me some more ideas? I can actually activate these samples. Uh, why is it... Um, it specifically says not for consumption. Why is this like an activation menu? What did that... Participated in Red Blood Energy Drink Trial. I... No! That is not what I wanted! Can I, uh, I'm gonna reload, because that is, a uh, pretty egregious, yeah, to title, there we are, continue from there, alright, <laughs> let's snag this, and collect these samples, and then I think I've caught up, so, <laughs> it's kind of funny that that's actually a thing I can do. Uh, let's head out then. I assume to collect and ponder all of the evidence we've collected. So that's the three scenes, right? Yep. Hmm. It isn't all piecing together. Did Lee Davis keep any of his case files, notes, or photos in his office? Uh, most of the time, but last I saw him, he wanted to take the stuff home to study it. I have a spare keys if you want to see if he left the files in his house. I think we can learn more if we get access to his case files and notes. Let's go. Something tells me the sheriff knew a little more than his deputy is aware. So, this is it. Sheriff Davis's house. The famous man's home. I'm excited. I have a feeling we'll get a much better idea of what's going on when we find his case files. Objective. Learn as much as you can about Lee Davis. Find his case files. I like the structure of this. This is a really satisfying sort of experience. Can I click on the lights? All right. All the lights are on. He must have left in a rush. That's actually an interesting note. I wouldn't have noticed that. I'd have just assumed it was a game mechanic. Beautiful photo. Yes, the sheriff was into photography. He carried his SLR everywhere, even on duty. He would take photos of all sorts of things. Hmm. I see a gun gun on the bedside table. Pretty intense. You see lots of violent crime around here, deputy? No, not really. Pretty peaceful town. These incidents are the first serious thing to hit this town since the tornado two years ago. Tornado? Yep, it was pretty bad. Some local businesses had to leave. Actually, the U.S. Army was looking to buy some land here before the tornado hit. Did they end up buying? No, nah, the tornado dissuaded them pretty fast. Oh. Also, a lot of that land was in contention. Apparently, the family that bought it was going through some legal problems with the reservation. Legal problems. 
Yeah, apparently years back they bought it off that Cherokee tribe I told you about earlier. Uh-huh, it's starting to fit together. Apparently they swindled him and gave him a rotten deal for it. U.S. Army didn't want to get involved and lost interest in the land. Uh-huh. So, th this is some kind of curse. Uh-huh. Because I can think like a cop, I can also think like a writer. And I myself have an interest in mythology. So, all clean. Interesting guy. In my experience, because I come from a family of a lot of law enforcement, it's usually at one end of the spectrum or the other. Completely clean or just a mess. Full fridge. If he was planning to disappear, he would have emptied this out first. She is very thorough. I like each of the main characters. I seriously do. Alright. And whoever wrote this actually knows pretty well how cops think. Is that, is that a video game system? It is! I see a controller! Huh. I wonder if that's for... kids? Grandkids? Whoa, that's a lot of guns in that wall. U.S. Army Rangers Survival Guide, so this man is a veteran. And there's a shotgun on top of that. With some shell casings. Lots of books. There's a Bible sticking out from the rest. Can... can I... Can I check it? Can I see what he might have earmarked? What he might have highlighted? If he scribbled in the margins? Alright. Hollywood Photography, Volumes 1 through 19. Fire extinguisher. I guess this guy was really ready for anything, eh? Almost too ready, right? Yeah. Medal of Honor, awarded to Lieutenant Colonel Lee Davis, 7th Rangers Division. Sheriff Davis was in the military. Yep, U.S. Army Ranger. How am I not surprised? So, he was a ranger. If he's dead, whatever killed him must have been pretty intense. That is, if he's dead. With his car gone, it's most likely he isn't dead. I'm surprised he left so many of his firearms behind. I'm sure he's not walking around unarmed. Yeah. What the hell is he hunting? I think he's the one that may have left the shell casings. Guide on how to modify small and medium-sized firearms. Uh-huh. This man's a hunter. Police reports, 2004 through 2006. That looks like medical casing. Photos from Antarctica. Lots of classic literature. This guy sure loved to read. All the lights are on. Uh -huh. Award of Excellence and Merit for Sheriff Lee Davis for Excellence in Law Enforcement. High Commissioner E. Baum. Pretty impressive. That is one serious wall of weaponry. Man, this guy was packing heat, eh? IMI Desert Eagle, Brata M9, and Remington 870 Shotgun. All reliable classics. Wow, you know your guns! I'm in America, I have to. <laughs> uh -huh. Ooh, I see keys. It's a set of keys. There's no car parked outside, so I don't think those are car keys. Yeah, his car is gone. Those aren't his house keys either, as they don't look like the copy I have. Best we hang on to these. Hmm. And another note. Again, different handwriting this time. What does it say? If you want to know the truth, John 634. That's from the Bible. Let's see if we can find one. The sheriff was a religious man, so I'm sure there's a Bible around here. Uh -huh. And I know just where to find it. I'm gonna check his computers first. Strange that he has several of them. This guy a hacker or something? He has so many computers. Hmm. Download case files by L. Davis. Yes. Let's see. Hmm. When I open a file, all that comes up is nonsense for text. Must be encrypted. Can you still copy the files onto your flash drive? Yeah, it doesn't stop me doing that. Very interesting. The man knows how to encrypt files, and yet chooses not to lock them into his computer. Are you implying that he did that on purpose? Most likely. He didn't put up a password for the computer itself, as if he knew someone else would use it. That's odd. Copy the file anyway. We can probably find the key word that deciphers the code later. Probably in a certain text. Hmm. Key 
furious. Check passage in the Bible, yeah. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. I wonder what that could mean. Most likely, something to do with the keys, since he obviously left those for someone to find. Oh yeah, the sheriff has a storage unit somewhere. This might be the clue as to where. As to where. Can I read that passage again? From now on, give us this bread. There's something on the map that might show. Silver Creek Road, Fisher Lane, Baker Lane. Taylor Lane, Washington Avenue, Atlantic Highway. Tinker Lane, Copper Lane, Atlantic Highway. Silver Creek Hotel. Baker Lane. That's where we're headed. Whoa. No. 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 Eh. Eh. There we are. All right. So since I've made some progress, I'm going to save. There we are. And I hope the characters can put together what I think I have. Hmm. Where do you think Lee Davis' storage unit is? Baker Lane. I get it from the Bible, yes! Uh huh. Alright. Ooh. This man is serious. This is it. He even labeled it for us. What's inside? Files on all the victims and some old cassettes. Sheriff Davis used to walk around with his voice recorder so he could record any ideas he had. You should give it a listen. Do you have a tape player on your car? Nah, man. This car is only a year old. No tape player. I have a player in my car. Let's go back to the hotel to check it out. Cool. I'll leave the blood samples and evidence in the police station. I'll drop you guys off first. We'll keep Lee Davis's files, if that's okay. Please do. Cassette tape. I want to check the rest of this place first. Empty. All empty. As if someone cleared everything out. Uh -huh. And yet they left the guns on the wall. Boxes inside boxes. I guess you can never have enough boxes. Bandages, iodine, syringes, scalpels. Very useful medical equipment. He was expecting to get injured. This is a lot of camping gear. Can I, can I inspect all of these? If I missed something with these. Camping gear. More medical equipment. What's in the lockers? Locked. Empty. Phone directories. Might be useful. These look a bit heavy, so we can pass by for them later. You're right there. Alright. Locked. Locked. Documents, but it's all in gibberish. Doesn't even look like a language. More encryption. You need to know the cipher or keyword to unlock it. It's an old way of hiding sensitive information. Looks important. We should take these. I can hold on to those for you. Thank you, Deputy. Locked. Alright. Weaponry. can't activate any of these. What's this? If you're reading this, chances are you're looking for something. Is that all it says? Alright. Hmm. Alright, pardon the jump right there. I just had to make sure that my face cam wasn't cut off. So... See ya! And apologies again. I had to cut there because my software is kind of throwing a fit. So let's check the car cassette player. Sarah turns on the car and inserts Lee Davis's tape. That is something very strange afoot. This is something simply unnatural. In my time as a sheriff, I have never seen anything like this before. Every crime scene lathered in the blood of its victims, yet never a body to be found. Always that smell of ammonia present in every scene, even though all three scenes are in such different locations. Due to the amount of blood and damage present, it might to assume that a murder has taken place and the bodies disposed of perfectly. 
This seems a bit too simple an answer. I must investigate more. Furthermore, I find it highly disturbing that every confirmed victim has come from the same college nearby. There must be some correlation. I know it must be so. The girls in the sorority all knew each other, and the boy who was killed in the park was a boyfriend of one of these girls, and the last missing piece is finding out about the victim of the car accident. Now, I have checked the vehicle's registration, and apparently the car was reported stolen in Durham a few days ago. The owner is alive and well and seems unaffected by these problems, yet obviously distraught at the fate of his vehicle. I must find out the identity of the driver. The notes I'm finding in each scene are also very disturbing indeed, as if left on purpose as a signature by the killer. I am led to believe that the answer lies in finding the correlation between all the victims and seeing who would have a motivation to eliminate all of them. I am not safe. For the past few days I have felt a presence around, someone watching, someone or some thing. I do not know if it is human. When you are in a small town like this one, it is not hard to detect when something irregular has happened. If you are listening to this, I am assuming you are also a member of the police force, and I ask you to please see that justice be done. These youngsters had promising lives in front of them, and now their families are telling me they have disappeared. My heart tells me they are no longer in this world. The brutality of the attacks makes me think that perhaps it may have been an animal, or even supernatural. But the lack of evidence makes me think that perhaps it was from someone or something intelligent and experienced. I leave behind my notes for you in case something happens to me. Farewell. All right. Interesting accent you have there, Sheriff. Huh. Can, I, can I not chat with my partner about this? Alright. So, he pretty much came to the same conclusions I have. And it is eerily silent. We've had some kind of ambiance this entire time. This is intentional. Alright. So, what do you think? It's easy to assume that the three cases are all related. After all, this small town hasn't seen anything major in years. Yeah, but one could plausibly claim that the attack in the National Park was a wolf attack. Except wolves very rarely attack people, and if they did, it wouldn't leave shell casings. Yeah, and the car accident really was caused by a drunk driving. The guy just left his car and wandered off somewhere. And what, shot at trees? Doesn't sound quite right, does it? No. All those creepy notes, the one Lee Davis left us was his, that's for sure, but the ones at the crime scene? I don't know. You think it might have been Lee Davis? No. He was with the deputy at the time of the first crime. Also, I can't imagine this decorated officer suddenly going on a murder spree. I've seen stranger things, but my gut instinct says it's not him. Besides, those tapes, he sounds really mystified and horrified by the cases. Did you get a quick look at the files? Very quick look. Did you notice that all the victims were under 24, all college students from the same university? Yeah, we need to investigate who of them knew each other. But first we should probably check out the evidence, check out for fingerprints, etc. Yeah, check out those blood samples too. Isn't it insane that there are no signs of the bodies, all just huge blood splatters? Have a work cut out for us. As long as that amateur deputy stores all the evidence well, we should be able to crack this. You were pretty rough on him earlier. Come on, you know he deserved it. Chances are the trail's gone cold by now. Like I said, we got our work cut out for tomorrow. What did he tell you while I was getting coffee? He was telling me about how strangely Lee Davis was behaving after these cases. How he was recording on his tapes, taking notes. He wasn't eating or sleeping either. Very strange. Anyway, I'm tired. I'm sure I've crammed a lot in him today. Well, we could have split this into two days, but the trail would have grown even colder. I'm off to bed. Cool. See you tomorrow morning, then. Alright. So he's just pacing around, then. Alright. 
anything else on TV. Ma'am, how are you? Good evening. Anything I can help you with? No, thank you. I think I'll head straight to bed. I know you're trying to tell me something here, game. I'm, I'm checking around, though. Make a little coffee. Just in case I ever wanted to have any sleep. Let's just head that completely off. <laughs> Pardon me. I think I'll check some of these other rooms. I know I, like, shouldn't. Because, you know, authority and all. Alright, so, I haven't even the option. Clear enough. Hmm. Hmm. Didn't unpack, so naturally it's empty. Something doesn't feel right. Can't put my finger on it. Just something isn't right. Day three. Sarah! Uh... What's happening? I just got a call from the captain. The deputy's body was found this morning. Deputy Hill is dead? Afraid so. Where was his body found? In the police station. We should investigate. The police station is on up Carry Road. Let's investigate. Alright! I knew something was going to happen. I knew it. Uh, ma'am? Anything? I'm still getting over that Mike is gone. We grew up together. Why is all this happening? I'm sorry that we couldn't stop this from happening. We'll get to the bottom of this. There are men in suits all over the town. They've blocked off all the roads. You can probably walk into town unencumbered. If you didn't notice, head west on the hotel road. Thanks. Men in suits. Feds? Kind of feels in poor taste to check this, still. Alright, I can't even. Uh, prior to heading outside, I think it's time to save. Hmm. So, I'm gonna check my car first. The map. So, apothecary. There is no apothecary. All right. So she just said head west. So, I'll check that way. Whoa. Who blocked the parking exit with their car? I guess we need to walk into town today. The stroll will do us good. I, I can't check them? And that's a dark vehicle. Yeah, I'm suspecting feds. Some kind of alphabet agency. Probably one I haven't the clearance to ask any questions of. Uh-huh. Alright, can't head inside. Can't head inside here either. Alright, I think I'll stay out of the road. Just in case. Anything here? Hi there. Sorry, ma'am. Sheriff Davis is away right now. I know. I was here yesterday investigating this house. Sorry, ma'am. Can't let you through. Orders from above. Whose orders? My boss, the special agent in charge. He's looking over the police station. I see. Yeah. So... FBI, sounds like. Which means this just got federal. The question is why. Hey, you two, clear out. This is a restricted area. We're police officers. My name is Detective Sarah Fitzgerald. Hawthorne County Police requested my presence here. Your badge says Norfolk Police. Aren't you a bit far away from your jurisdiction? Aren't you listening? We were asked to come here. This is my jurisdiction. Not anymore. FBI has taken over the show now, so you can take it easy now, Detective. Thank you for your concern. What happened? I heard the deputy was killed. Yes, we're looking into it, Detective. You're relieved. Mike. I'm sorry, Detective, but I really need to ask you to leave now. We knew him. We should have the right to see him. Also, all the case evidence is in that building. We are taking over that as well. The minor cases like the car accident will pass to the Durham Police Force. You are relieved, madam. Don't talk to me like I'm a civilian. The cases are all related. Whoever killed the deputy also killed the college kids. That's for us to decide, Detective. Will you be leaving now, or do I need to have you escorted? Sarah, let's go. Philip, you can't be buying this. They're FBI, and they outrank us. Let's go. I can't believe you! Uh -huh. So, I called it. Move along. This area's closed off. Wait, you mean the entire north part of this town is closed off? 
Afraid so, ma'am. FBI business. Move along. No lollygagging. Sneak around them. I think I can. Can I? Aww. Aww. <laughs> These guys are staring at me like, did you think that was slick? Move along. Move along. Alright. So. Huh. Where to? This is interesting. I am into this. tell where I should head. I suppose I'll check out as much of the town as I can. Because I haven't had the ability to explore it yet. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe I missed something along this street. Let's see, is there anything in my inventory I haven't checked? Notes, shell casings, samples, the keys, cassette tape, animal hairs, Ouija board. I don't know. I have the faintest idea where I should head at this point. Aha! See, all right, I headed inside the hotel again, and that actually triggered something. Well, looks like that's us off the case. Phil, I can't believe you're giving up now. The FBI and the Dome Police are here now. We're not even operating within our own state. I'm sorry, Sarah, but we have to leave. I'm going to talk to the captain and see if we can get special permission to reopen the case. I don't care if we have to get permission from DC. Good luck with that. I can't believe you, Phil. You know that whoever is responsible for all that is out there, and you're just going to walk away? Of course I do. You think there wasn't this much politics when I was an inspector in England? It's the same thing. Shit happens, Sarah. You gotta trust the system. I'm not gonna let this slide, Phil. I know we haven't known each other that long, but I know you're a cop deep in your bones. We gotta find this guy. We will. We will. It's just going rogue is the fastest way for us to lose our badges. You still have the case files and Lee Davis's photos and tapes, right? Heh. <laughs> Good job. Let's show the captain everything and explain what happened. Right now, the FBI has everything locked up, so it's not like we can get any more evidence. I'm sure we can work out something special. I trust the captain. You're right. Sorry I shouted at you earlier. You're passionate, and a cop deep at heart. It's a good thing. Let's head back to Norfolk now. This place gives me the creeps. Sure, let's get our bags. I'll meet you here at the lobby in 15. They billed me for consuming some from the hotel room fridge. I haven't even opened mine the whole time. Don't you hate it when that happens? Tell me about it. Good luck with it. I'll see you in 15. Will I? The hell? Who is she? Mark? Ah, you got here in time. For a second I thought we'd miss each other. I flew over the second you called me. So you think it's them? I'm pretty sure. All the telltale signs. Hmm. Sir Hamilton won't be happy. I thought we sorted this out years ago. Apparently not. Tell him we'll need the whole team back. It's way worse than before. I'll take a look around. So, are you extracting tonight? No. I'm returning to Norfolk tonight, and we'll go through the debrief with Sarah. You old softy. Don't spend too long there. I'll meet you in DC in a week. Yep. See you there. Oh, Sam. Yeah? Don't stay here too long. I know. I'll see you in DC, Mark. And that's the end? All right. Cliffhanger. So, clearly, he's with some other agency. And I kind of wonder if he's even English. Or whether or not that's simply an act. <laughs> I have... Only the sadness that it was so short. Because I am impressed. I was into that story. So... Alright. Critical elements. The visuals for something made in the RPG Maker engine. Pretty solid. The artwork is charming. The 
animations, what little there were of, you know, walking and everything, uh, were decent, they were adequate. And uh, the soundtrack, you know, what's uh, a limited selection there was of it, was all pretty well selected and conceived. It fit the atmosphere, actually led to a certain sense of creepiness, because this is an experience in which there is very little, actually there is zero, action. It's all atmosphere, it's all progression, it's all investigation, and yet I still felt apprehension, I still felt anxiety, I was still kind of hesitant to progress in certain places. And it's actually stitching together a pretty interesting narrative that implies a lot of things about the setting in which it's taking place through some pretty subtle means. And I want to know what happens next. So that's an impressive facet of something that is the free first chapter of what I think is a uh, charged for continuation. As in, this is the hook to see if one is willing to pay for the additional chapters. And assuming they are at a reasonable cost, I certainly would, because I enjoyed this. So... I think the only criticism I could levy at this is that as a standalone experience, which I know it isn't intended as, it still kind of is though, there is very little resolution. There isn't a lot of conclusion of this narrative as a standalone project. It is clearly a hook and only that. So in that case, it's, uh, it's kind of incomplete. However, again, I recognize that is completely intentional, so it, it isn't exactly a uh, shortcoming as much as it is just something that, you know, those that were hoping for more of a complete experience it might get a little, um, uh, frustrated isn't the right word, um, disappointed with, I suppose. Uh, and yet, at the same time, I, I recognize, as I said, that, uh, you know, this is meant to, uh, spur interest and uh, incline one to continue on with the series. So um, I'll check into it and I'll annotate where you can see the uh, cost of the following chapters. I know at least the second one is already released and I can't say how many I know are planned. Um, I'll Make a note of that as well if I can find any information pertaining to it. So, until then, I am Kinsmark here at Less Level Press, and as always, I wish you all good gaming and Yatsby.